Greg finally got his bobblehead. He's so happy. Look at that thing going crazy. Greg, you're gonna that head's gonna fall off of that. You're gonna get too excited. Notice how good that wrist motion is with Greg. Yeah, practice. It's pretty expert. It sure is. So, what's up, guys? What's up, man? It's an update yeah. on, on Burrow. It sounds like. Awesome. Just, okay. Fill me in, man. I woke. Uh, my alarm went off late. I literally got up five minutes ago. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, Burrow's uh, uh, up to uh -oh. schedule, pretty much. You know, they yeah. expect, he expects to be thrown in May. Um, let's. Oh yeah. So they interviewed Katie Blackburn yesterday. Shop. I don't know if you got to read any of that. Um, State. They talked about the stadium lease. Stadium lease. You know, it's a slow process. Thing people don't know about the stadium lease, by the way, is they they have like a bunch of 10 one year deal extensions. So even though it ends in 2026, they can extend it each year for 10 years. So they they say they're slowly trying to get that and taken care of, and they're still trying to concentrate on both T and Chase. They're, but the reason why they haven't done it, talked to Chase yet, they're waiting to see on Justin Jefferson. Oh, so as soon as Je Justin Jefferson signs that big yeah. deal for what 150 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're going to go ahead and sign Chase and and T. Well, uh, they're waiting on him. Who knows? They're, what wait, they're waiting. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but they're going to. They, they said that's their motive right now. They waited on uh, every other quarterback to sign too before the cut. Right, done. right. I don't that's know. True. They don't. They don't like to be on the ball when it comes to these things. No, I don't. Yeah, I know. How shocked would you guys be if they did sign? All of a sudden, they came out before the season started and signed Chase and Higgins to a, a longer term deal. I mean, they need to do something with the money, so I yeah. don't know if it'll be T that because I mean, it just seems like they're gonna make him play on the franchise tag, and that won't affect anything. But they could use the money to, you know, give Jamar more up front right now and get an extension done. I mean, they if they want to, they have a little wiggle room, you know, with the money. So they're just, we'll I see. mean, they're fucking with our emotions, man. Keep T. Everybody loves T. We want T. Sign him T. Uh, and then it's like T's agent says he wants to trade. All right. Well, trade T. We can trade T and we can get this. And then now all of a sudden they're like, hey, wait, we're going to sign Justin Jefferson. And then after that, we're going to, um, well, well, not us, but after they sign Justin Jefferson, we'll work out a long term deal yeah. for T and Chase. Get this. And the, the Clowney, the Panthers just gave Clowney two years, $20 million worth up to $20 million deal worth, worth up to $24 million. You think well, he got overpaid? I mean, you said the Panthers. Panthers, yeah. I visited the Jets too, so. Oh, I mean, that guy, he's done good to get ten million every single year, pretty much, right? So. Yeah, you know, he's hey, you really can't say he's been a bust or anything. He just never lived up to, you know. Yeah, he had a pretty good season with Baltimore last year. No, he uh, did, but he had a lot of talent around him too. Which Carolina? I mean, they they traded Burns, so they had a giant hole there on the. At, at edge i still expect them maybe to draft one but they've signed a, just a boatload of guys we'll see how it works out i mean didn't work out last right. year yeah yeah exactly but yeah yeah the one thing i got from the uh, blackburn interview really well it sounds like you know the reason i mean you, you look at pay for i just want to say for those who worry about the lease deal i worry about the lease deal myself at times but i mean the reason why they're updating the stadium and all is to try to you know to case say hey we're committed to staying here we're we're, we're we're fixing up the stadium we want to stay here so in my opinion that's all positive vibes right now so far just a matter of time when they can get a deal done yeah and wade had, had put this in the comments the other day yeah. and i you know expressed my oh. condolences there but uh say it again i mean it's always unfortunate to lose family members yeah. so thoughts are with you brother uh oh, sorry. sorry to hear that it's always tough, hear that, man. uh now i got to try to transition. But uh, right. we're going to talk some draft today. But uh, Latham and Sweater, Murphy and Patrick Paul. So let's just start there. We can give our own opinion. Yeah. I mean, if it's me, I really like Murphy. I really like Johnny Newton. But I don't really feel great about Patrick Paul. So with that said, knowing the hole we have at nose tackle specifically as well, yeah, I think I'd go Latham and Sweat, and I know it's a little worrisome that Latham didn't test and this and that, but, I mean, the tape's still good. He's a young guy, big, strong, you know. Uh, he's got, he got, I mean, on tape, his athleticism looks fine on tape, you know. So, for I mean, I get it. You always want to have as much as you can on these guys, as much information 
But I'm still not ruling out Latham. And if that was my two choices, I think I'd go that route just because I don't love Patrick Paul so much. But What's there's the a big, big part of me. What's there's the a big, big part of me that just uh, – I mean, without – I don't know, man. He just needs refinement. He's been yeah. he's been there for like five years at Houston. You would think like he would be more farther along with his footwork and technique and those things than what he is at this point. Now, I mean, he's a big, strong guy. Yeah, uh, athletic. He's like six seven, long team arm. captain. I'm not super against Patrick Paul, but I'm just saying he's not high on my list. And he's been a left tackle mainly at Houston. And I mean, I obviously we need both, but it seems like. Orlando Brown's here to play left tackle and doesn't want to move over for like yeah. three more seasons. So with Trent Brown just being on one year, I, I don't know. I just feel – I would feel better about getting the guy who's played right tackle and not having to move people around. I mean, Mims, Latham, Fuaga, all those guys have played, you know, right tackle. Those are all first guy for the first round guys, but like second round guys, you're looking at Patrick Paul, but what, in, what about – Yeah, like he's saying fans? versus Sweat here. So like you'd get Latham or Murphy in the first. Yeah. If it was one to one, I would say give me Murphy. Yes. But if Take, you're pairing it with Sweat for Latham and you're pairing it with Paul for Murphy, I just like that combination. Yeah, we, we hear what you're saying, Jolly, but we're going to go ahead and go with Murphy and Sweat. We're going to mix it up. <laughs> <laughs> we want all the D tackles, man. Right. We're going to go Murphy and Sweat, and then we're going to maybe try to pick up Fisher in the third round. Right, exactly. Yeah. And anybody that got a draft guide, I tried to send out updates again today with, uh, Stats, which I got from sports-reference.com. Which I, I saw that. I got my email. It was really, it's, it's awesome to see, Dale. Every time you upgrade, that's awesome, bro. Hey, and let me, oh, let me just set, tell manually it. type all those in for, uh, you know, 240 prospects. On, yep. I think and it's people, 242. If you get like this that. draft guide, you're talking about a $5 donation to a charity, you know, to help yes. out disabled uh, adults and, uh, and military veterans go to games. This is just – this is like a thick ass thing, man, and this is just the, the uh, defensive tackles. Well, here's mine. I printed two sided. I printed it out. And I put it. Yes. In so, and that's two sided. So it wasn't well, two sided. The, and then the cool thing about the draft guide, it gets to the point. Like you know, I like it how you know it's like facts. It's not like written. Well, I like how in the end you do an overview overall what you think. But I like I look on this side. Okay, positives and negatives. It's just. Cut straight to the point. Right? Yeah, and I'm not using all these big fancy terms that some of these guys that no. do professional scouting right. do because that's just not me. It's like it's and your personality, an idiot's out. guide to yeah. scouting. Right. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and in the wrap up, your personality comes out some when you're talking about the players. Exactly. It's so. a you know the guys at work. I sold two of them last night to some guys at work, and they were looking at it, talking about how nice it is. One of them was a Vikings fan. He took the draft guide. You know. Yeah, I mean it's it's it works prospect. for every team. It's not Bengals specific. No. So um, that's that's a good thing about the draft guide, you know. Any any team that wanted to do it, I mean, not that any any other teams watching Bengals and Brews here to promote that too, but yeah. yeah so um well, I want to talk D tackles, but uh yeah, Newton and the first Murphians, yeah. We'll go for that. Thank you, Darth. Good Just idea. Constant pass rushers. By the way, yeah, before, Greg. before we get to DT's porch shop, Malik Neighbors just ran a four three five today as at his combine. Uh, Conflicting reports and in, incoming said there's say, something saying four three five to four 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 point four four. So, man, I don't give a way, fuck. That guy was fast. If he ran He's ten smooth. seconds. That's fine because yeah. Dale tape don't lie. Right. I would not be surprised if Neighbors is the first. Why but all his five. like all his other testing was explosive. I mean, and you see it, like Chop said, you see it on tape. So, yeah. I mean, I've got, him, I've got him at fifth overall prospect. Like, I'm not going to move him ahead of Marvin Harrison like some people will, but I get it. I mean, I understand why you might. You've got more pieces to the puzzle, and they're both damn good. They're both top five players in the entire draft. So, yeah. I don't think you can go wrong with either of them, and Remadunze is not too far behind. So, it's a good yeah, group. I saw uh... – Bucky Brooks and his point three point oh, he gave us a Brian Thomas Jr. here, ringless bandit, talking about the uh, Brian Thomas Jr. I would not be disappointed in that pick. No, but if they signed T and Chase, that that'd be fucking weird, man. I mean, well, I think you could still use him. He's such a God, good yes, threat you could too. Use him. You know what I mean? It would just He's, it could open things up for those guys. Like I wouldn't be against it. I just think we have bigger needs. Like if we would have had to really fill more of our yeah. needs, yeah, 
for longer term players to fill for me to feel super comfortable with Brian Thomas. But if we get him, I'm not going to be mad because I think he's worth you know going in that area around pick 18. So yeah, no, I, I forget what report I, I found it somewhere today, but uh, they they compare Brian Thomas to T Higgins. I know that's a big shock to you, poor chap, because you've said it for like you and Karen. Oh, have said I, it for, that's what I've said. Yeah. Hey, and, Dale, this is true, man. Maybe for next year's guide, you could give like half chub, full chub. It's the boners list. Maybe like how many eggplants, you know? You know, I almost need a special version for, you know, the crew crew people. I never <laughs> right, know who's yeah. going to buy one of these, you know? So it's like, oh, boner list. And then they're like, I don't well, have my and this is what I get. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I try to keep away from the boner list, but, you know, maybe I got I'll, my Yoshi maybe we'll list. Have a, Maybe we'll have a boner episode and just talk yeah, about we'll have the boner list, list episode. We'll have a yeah. boner episode for yeah. five favorite boner tastic prospects. Oh, and on top of that, opening days tomorrow, and hopefully the Reds start out big, even though dealt with some injuries. But we'll let's yeah. hope for a good season. Matt McLean yeah. may literally be out for the season. Yep. If Harrison's more like Fitzgerald, neighbors more like Chase. Which one do you want? I mean, Fitzgerald that's the thing. Or Chase. <laughs> you, huh? you you're, you're getting. Two guys that may end up in the Hall of Fame. I don't know how you can be mad about either of them. No. It's like Julio Jones and A.J. Green. Either would have been fine. Yeah. Now, maybe I would give the – and this is – man, see, this is what's going to get me killed here being on a Bengals show. We know Fitzgerald did it for longer also, but this just the size. So maybe you're more of a target in the red zone. But Chase is so damn quick and neighbors yeah. are similar that they're so smooth and they can get in and out of the routes really well that they can eat in the red zone just the same. Just It's a little different. So, I mean, maybe that's the one thing that you give the edge. But like I said, you're talking top five prospects. You're talking if Chase continues to play how he's played early in his career, you're talking two Hall of Famers because, I mean, Fitzgerald, obviously Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. All right, D-tackles. All right. Let me get so, out my, my guide. I've got some stuff from PFF as well. So like I always say when we're going to look at PFF, not to be all end all, but do like to reference it as well. We'll just start at the top with my number one ranked defensive tackle. And you guys, if you have someone different, that's that's fine. Uh, we we agree. Pretty, pretty much no. no. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Newton, Jerzon Newton from Illinois. So uh, came in at 6'1", 304. A lot of people had him more 295. So um, – that was some more news today. Supposedly he's good to go and going to work out for teams. What was that, Greg? Like the 16th or sometime in April? Yeah, the th but Newton, if you're watching this, don't don't try too hard, okay? We we want you at 18. <laughs> yeah, don't try too hard, Newton. Just for the Bengals, like, just yeah. can you do a private workout just for the right. Bengals and try Come and hard? play with your boy Teddy K, man. You guys are alumni from the same school. So I, I would. I mean, there's a lot to like with Newton, and if you look at, at PFF, I mean, of the big draft names, he's he's fourth on here uh, for his overall grade, 84.9. Against the run, 77.1, which is still pretty solid. I mean, he's not, you know, it's not great, but when you watch him on tape, I mean, he just makes plays because he's so damn explosive and so quick off the snap that he's going to make plays in pass rush, and he's going to blow up plays in the run game. Because he just gets in the backfield so damn quick. Yeah, I saw um, uh, Goodberry's breakdown of him. He was showing it, and he was like, he looks like he's off sides, but if we slow it down, he was like, nobody else is moving, and he's already like two steps, and the ball's snapped. Right, and that's one thing. Sometimes he does, he gets so aggressive, and he's so good at that, that sometimes he does get some penalties on there, so he does have some snap timing inconsistencies. <laughs> that's a negative I have on him. But you'll you'll take it all day long if a guy's going to jump off sides one time a game. Right. right? he's destroying 75% of the snaps he's in on because he's just yeah. so damn explosive. Um, and then against the uh, pass rush, 84, 84.0. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. Oh, oh man. Hell yeah, it is. There you and go. It shows on tape. I mean, and he's done it now for three seasons. So uh, we look back in 2021, he had three and a half sacks and this is just sack numbers, but then 2022 up to five and a half sacks. And then this past year, seven and a half sacks. Right. And he actually had more tackles for loss in 2022 with 14. Uh, and then that was down to eight and a half. So, I mean, you're just talking about a dude. Yeah, he's a little short, but I, that this doesn't for D tag. Me. We're talking D tackles, though. I think Wade thinks we're talking the offensive Oh, line. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This we're talking about defensive hey, hey. tackles. 
Dale, yeah, so was you know, so was Geno Atkins. We thought that was too short. Yes. So, same deal with Aaron Donald. They all thought he, I don't want to hear. I just don't care about that. Same. But yeah, if it was an O line, if it was an offensive tackle, hell yeah, yeah that's I'd be like, yeah, that's not gonna because your arm length, everything. Uh, yeah. Wade was thinking O line, man. Now we, so, you're cool, Wade. Wade, I, don't I get worry off. about it. I almost you're missed good. that too, Chop. Till you said it again, I was like, oh, six because Murphy's six foot. So as we we look at the size of some of these guys, six one is plenty big enough. It's more. And yeah. he plays strong. So even if he does come in a little under 300, I'm not concerned because on tape, he holds up just fine. And how and much like did said, he play? How close. much experience does he have in college? Three seasons. Load. That's what I, I mean. He's, he's played parts of four seasons, but four. he's been, he's been a starter yeah. for three seasons. And that's a boatload of experience, a boatload of production, a boatload of pressures. I mean, the guy, I just think he'd be a slam dunk pick at 18. Now I know the yeah, offensive nice. tackle thing, but I this guy's rated tenth overall on my board. Dude. I think he's a top ten player in the entire draft, and we're picking at 18. If you're sitting there and he's on the board, I just I would love to see the Bengals take him. He is not a nose tech. He's a three tackle. He's a three. He's a three tech. But three tech. he does kick in the nose every once in a while. But he's not a nose tackle. Yeah, and and that's what I mean. Like right now, we just. We don't have that on the roster, so we're still like you get it. But there's like sweat, and beyond that, there's day three guys, and we'll talk yeah. about some of them for nose tackles. So it's really not a good class for that. And the Bengals not able to get DJ Reader back, and whatever they didn't like about Tyre Tart, they're they're probably not going to have like right and, if they don't like, get sweat. Not, I mean, they're going to have to get sweat, or they're yeah. probably not having right. like a premier guy there, and they're going to have to. They're going to have to just use three tech. I mean, they're exactly. just going to have to line these guys up a little bit. You're not going to go in the A gap as much. Which what? is not uncommon in the NFL. It wouldn't no. be the first team. Like, over well, half the teams do not use a nose tackle. Right. I was telling Shop this. You know, how, right, so, you know, this DJ Reader played as many snaps as Yoshi did last year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean. There's a lot of these nose tackles. And if you get sweat, he might be on the field for 30 to 40% of the snaps in a game. Right. Yeah, that's it. You know, and if you get a Johnny Newton, you're talking a guy maybe on the field for 70% of the snaps. Exactly. You know? So I, I'm just, I'm not going to pass up a better player to force what I consider a need. And I don't think the Bengals would either in the first round. So that's it. I don't know their opinion on Johnny Newton, but I know mine and I think he's damn good. So I would have no problem taking him there. But I mean, um, so, I mean, that's just some of the stuff. I mean, his hands are incredible. Uh, just production wise, 100 plus pressures, 12 sacks combined the past two seasons. 100 plus pressures. Wouldn't you like to add that <laughs> with uh, with Trey Hendrickson and Sheldon Rankins? You, you talk about a guy that could get Sai and Murphy taking yeah. another step, Hubbard. You know, you're rotating these pieces in and out. You've got Rankins, Hill, and him. I mean, I just feel like you're pretty stacked at that point. What's up, buddy? What's up, fellas? I flip my tongue at him and he goes out. Yeah, but no, Dale, you talk about... We're 20 minutes in, and we've only talked about Johnny Newton. Dude, oh, we sweet. could do the whole fucking show about Johnny Newton, and I would hey. love it. I just wanted to let you guys know. I know I'm sorry I'm late, but thanks, guys, for waiting on me. Yeah. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> yeah. But no, Dale, I mean, Dale, like you, we're in a win-now mode. You're trying to win the Super Bowl. I think this may be... This is a guy that could come in and contribute right now for you if you're winning, since you're in a win-now mode. This guy's yeah, going to be a badass, man. It's going to be a yes. guy that teams plan around this yes. guy. It's and I'm trying to prepare that we take like JC Latham. I know, right? No, I Johnny do. becomes an All Pro every year, and we're going. Yeah, that would have been I, nice. And you right. know, I was looking at Bucky Brooks' uh, mock draft last night, and he had him going to Buffalo. And I, you know, I'm not. Yeah. I like Buffalo, but I thought, come on, man. Yeah. They don't need another piece like that. Right. Damn it. No, and, and Pittsburgh, who had a Keanu Benton last year, and they've got right. a lot, and these guys, like Ogan Joby, all these pieces on their D, high, uh, whatever, high, whatever, high Smith. Yeah. yeah. I was like, high power. I'm like, that's not right. Yeah. Not, high right. Alex High Smith. Um, um, something about getting high. Yeah. High something. But yeah, we'll, we'll move on to another player. Another player. The only other D tackle I really have a first round grade on is Byron Murphy from Texas. And. Malik Wright and other people have said the Bengals are really interested. I have no clue who they're interested in. Yeah, right. Um, I know but that Zach I'd Taylor be interested did go in him and Newton. 
And Zach Taylor did go to Texas Pro Day, and Zach Taylor doesn't go to a lot. And so a lot of people are speculating. But there's like three players it's down fact. there. Four. It's fact. No, there's there's a right tackle, there's a halfback, there's two D tackles, there's two receivers. I'm on. bad at counting. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's at least well, hopefully he went down there to see Sweat, Murphy, Sanders. And uh, who's that w- receiver that ran the Oh, yeah, I forgot time? about the tight end. There's seven. Right. Uh, worthy, but there's also A.D. Mitchell, who fits more of the size type. And he ran, you know, he just ran a miserable four three five or whatever. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, at like 6'2", 205. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're, Texas stacked with talent coming yeah, out they are. this year. And yeah. Byron Murphy, he doesn't have as much playing time college experience as Newton. Is that correct? Yes. That yeah, means- he's a one-year starter. I mean, he's played some. Like, uh, you know, last year he only had one sack. He played in 13 games but 26 tackles. This year he only had 29 tackles, but he upped his sack total to five. And PFF grade-wise, I mean, they loved him. Uh, 91.1 overall, second highest, only two, to Andre Sweat, his teammate. So. Yeah. 80.5 against the run. So him and Newton, they're not too far off grade-wise no. on PFF no. against the run. Now, he did have a higher pass rush grade, but I'm telling you on tape, I think Newton's a better pass rusher. Personally. Oh, it looks – you know, look. Murphy gets pushed around a little more. He came in at 297, but I, I feel like he plays closer to 290. And you see him end up on the ground a lot. I mean, he's yeah. strong. He's good. Like, I, I like him. I right. think he'd be worth pick 18. But Newton is just better. You know, when I watch him, I'm like, Newton is a better player than him. Right. Newton has elite moves to get past people, like yeah, swim move and that. Right. Yeah, everything right. with the hands. So right. Am I going to cry a river if we take Murphy? No, I'll, I'll be happy with Murphy. But yeah, and, and I think he's got a high ceiling. Like right. he's still growing, and he's going to get better well, with the one well, year. And look at the talent ready, ready now. I think Newton comes in and dominates year one. Right, exactly. the Bengals like drafting people with the same names too. Since we already have a Murphy, there's a high likelihood we'll get another Murphy. Last year we had, uh, we got a Turner, you know, and we had a Turner. It's just the way they do things. So Murphy probably might get the edge with the Bengals just because the name. And you look at Newton. Look, look at the talent. Yep, there you go. Just there, about yeah. to put it out that Murphy had talent around him. You could argue. Well, and Sweat and Murphy, they helped each other. It's probably yeah. why they're up there so high. And Sweat takes up so much damn space, he's going to make the job easier on the yeah, other dude, guy. It's huge. It's uh, like, what, 370, 360, 5 or something yeah, like that? Almost 370. Jesus. Uh, That's bigger than me. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to like with Murphy. I mean, burst off the snap is good, right. too. High effort, natural leverage, quick hands, athleticism. Uh, he had 45 pressures this year. What I really like, the pass uh, – I hate saying this because I always screw it up. Pass, rush, win, rate. It's too you did a good job. Nineteen point six pass, rush, win rate. So almost twenty percent. That, and that's like elite, yeah. elite. You know, it was probably yeah. tops in uh, college football this year. And then his RAD score was eight point nine six. So, but six foot two ninety seven. So if you're concerned about Newton size, you know, I think Same. and it shows a little bit. But I think he's going to get bigger. And he's going to get stronger. Yeah. Um, I don't have his age off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure he's fairly young. I'm pretty sure he's younger than Newton. So that's a positive for him. Um, it's just the bull rush is inconsistent. The, it's really the functional strength in general. Like, and he ends up on the ground, but I mean, then he'll blow you away. And his his first step, you see, similar to Newton, it's, it's special. So both the, and I think that's what makes them first round guys. And I think both of them can hold up in the run game. They're not nose tackles, but I think right. they hold up fine. So I don't, Which one's I don't really better in business. the run? Which one was better I mean, in the run? I mean, per PFF, Murphy is 80.5 and Newton's 77.1. But you're talking about a guy who played beside Sweat also. Right. Yeah. Naturally, I mean, you know, your run defense say, is going to be better on your line. Without Reader, that's why I asked because, I mean, Reader was our big run stopper. So if we don't replace him with someone like Sweat, then we're going to need the other tackles in there that are good against the run, especially since fucking dumbass Baltimore went ahead and got King Henry. I think B.J. Hill yeah. is very solid against the run. So, yeah. like I, I think that's part of it. You're just going to ask B.J. And if you got Rankins and Newton or Murphy rotating in with Rankins, providing more of the pass rush, I mean, Hill, yeah. you're not asking him to try to do that as much. And he's just a good, yeah. solid player, B.J. Hill is, so. 
I don't know. I I, look, I just look for everybody to have to step up their game, not having Reader. Yeah. But Reader was on the field thirty or forty percent of the time anyway. So, you know, that's just yeah. something to always keep in mind. Yes. Yeah. Moving on, we're not going to get to sweat right away because he is farther down my list. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming up. So, get your pitchforks ready because right. it might be a while before we get to sweat. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you why because I just. I think pass rushers and guys that are on the field more often are going to be more valuable. But we look at how we know as Bengals fans how valuable somebody like DJ Reader was for this team. Right. And we all wanted him back. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I still like Sweat. I still see the value in it. But the reason why he's a little farther down on my personal list is just for that reason, you know. He's got, he might be on the field 40% of the snaps. And the weight, the weight is a concern a little bit. I mean, he's got to keep it under control. He didn't weigh in at the senior bowl and yeah. things like that. You, you, you know, when your yeah. weight goes up, when you're not taking care of yourself, that the question comes in, does this person really care about football or anything? Doesn't mean he doesn't, but that will come into question. How motive, How committed are you? Yeah. This is a yeah. good point here, but I did hear that that they they think that Mur like Murphy, not not the drafted Murphy, but Miles Plus, Murphy. Hubbard. Yeah, and kick here. Hubbard in. That's what I'm saying, kick Hubbard inside. Right. That's what I've heard that – is a possibility for this, or year. The, especially you know they could do it a little more often. Uh, I, I still think it'd be more third down if they're wanting to keep Hubbard on the field. I don't think Hubbard's going to be out there in your base package at D tackle. It's just not. It's not going to yeah. happen. Yeah, you'd be better off putting, you know, Hill and Sheldon Rankins out there together than you would moving him in. And you have him at edge on those early downs to right. stop the run. So yeah. Uh, Braden Fisk is actually my next guy. Uh, a little older, 24. He's got really short arms, uh, which shows up sometimes finishing plays, finishing tackles, shows up on tape. But his motor's crazy. I mean, if anybody saw the combine, I didn't know he's gonna, devil. yeah, I didn't know he's gonna test as well as he did. I mean, he plays just relentless effort, but he also has the athleticism, and you can see the burst and getting off the snap from him, too. Um, he transferred from Western Michigan. So it was nice to see him go to Florida State and still be just as good. I mean, he had six sacks last year for Western Michigan. He goes to Florida State, plays better competition, six sacks at Florida State. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he's there was no drop off in his play. Nope. It doesn't matter where he's at. He's gonna come to the NFL. He's gonna he's gonna work his ass off, and he's he's gonna be yep. a good solid player. I don't know how yeah. high he goes though. Could you know? he sneak in the first round? Do you think near the end? I think he could. I think I the two's taking uh, taking him. If but, they wouldn't have brought back their their D tackle, like I was a little look at here. I was really thinking, you know, before they brought back the D tackle, that they were going to, you know, take him at pick right. thirty two. Now they might go receiver again, even though they brought in Marquise Brown. I don't think that'll stop him. Um, Marquise Brown ain't shit. Now, if you go PFF, man, I gotta, I gotta move this around a little bit to even find this. He's, he's a little farther down, for sure. No, I don't even know if he's on here. KP from KC Five said Fisk reminds him of uh, John Randall with his money. Yeah, John Randall went undrafted, little guy, but didn't stop him. Now did it? Yeah, Fisk. I don't have Fisk scores in front of me. Uh, PFF. So, I know he wasn't on the first page or two. So that's not great, but, I mean, he's a hell of a player. Uh, he's probably not going to give you as much against the run, but he's going to give his effort. Yeah. He's just – he's another guy that's not, not real big either. So, he's 6'3", but he's only 292. So, if you're worried about these guys that are six foot and 6'1", being – Right. Pounds, you should – yeah. you know, that's, that's a big part of it. You're 6'3", and you're 290. And you're 24, so you're you're pretty maxed out. You know, you're not magically going to play bigger. Right. Well, that's just right. up to the strength training coach to get you in here and put some muscle on you. Usually, that happens when they transition to the NFL, doesn't it? I don't know. No. And they did it with that uh, order, but yeah, it's, that it's Carter needs to still come along some. Once yeah. Once you're once yeah. you're once you reach a certain age. I mean, that's just like me. The only thing I work out is my beer gut. <laughs> and and your hand. Yeah. Your wrist. Yeah, you work the wrist out a lot. Got some elite forearm muscles. It's true. 
All right. So the next guy I got, Michael Hall. So I've kind of had him up in this top four area, you know, for months. And now it seems like he's starting to come around. The best thing he's done is he's just continued to add weight. So I still am listed at 290. I know he said he was sick and lost some weight at the um, Senior Bowl. So he weighed in 280 there. Then the combine, he's up to 290. At Ohio State's Pro Day, he was up to 299. Hey! So he he's uh and he's also a little taller, so he's listed at six three. Uh, yeah, but he's up to almost three hundred now. And the explosiveness, he ran like four seven five forty yeah. at the pro day. Now right. pro days, you gotta, you know, you like to see that more at the combine. But I mean, these yeah. are televised a lot, so they're not gonna be too far right. off. And scouts are timing this stuff, so yeah. Sometimes yeah, the, you know, days, the stopwatches. The stopwatches stop a little earlier than they probably should. Yeah. Hey, let's get him over to Midwest Best Barbecue or something. Oh, hey, how old is Hall? Dusty's saying he's only 20. Is that right? I think he if if he's not 20, he's probably just turned 21. How so old that's is a lot of people that? thought thought he would go back uh, to Ohio State for another year, but he's got a young kid and stuff like that. And I mean, he's he's nailed the process. He was great at the Senior Bowl. Uh, He's put on weight, tested incredibly well at the pro day. Uh, I think he's solidly in that second round range, is where he should yeah. go. Him and Fisk, like, I don't, I, either one, I don't think would bother me. But I mean, his RADs ended up being from his testing 9.24, so really damn good. Yeah. Uh, he'll be 21 June 13th. There you go. So he's still go. 20, not even 21, where Fisk is 24. Right. So if you like both players, they're both really good athletes. Your higher ceiling guy all day long is going to be Michael Hall. Dude, Michael Hall, I'm wow, very intriguing. Yeah. But who gives you the bigger impact next year? It might be Fisky. That's what right. I'm saying. Like, get yeah. the person that's going to give you the big impact on their rookie contract, and then you know what? Recycle and get a new one. Yeah. If that's uh, what I'm we not have so sure do. that Michael Hall doesn't get up to speed pretty quick. I mean. He's just ace this whole process. Whatever he's yeah. doing, working, he's putting his rest scores. Wow. I mean, he'd be doing real good if he wasn't from a shitty school. <laughs> I'm, oh. I'm just fucking around. Damn. Wow. I don't hate Ohio State. I know everybody in the comments get pissed off about that, man. I know everybody around here loves well, it. Well, Chop, we're moving on to one of your favorite players in the draft. Uh, Ryan says they uh, need to change philosophy to a, a one gap scheme. Uh, so, Hall. Like against the run, sixty nine point five. So still close to seventy. It's not awful. We'll see some that's that's lower than that. But pass rush eighty four point eight. So I mean that's that's he's gonna come in and he'll be able to contribute in that role, if nothing else, early yeah. on. Third downs, you get him on the field. You have him get after the quarterback. And I think he's only gonna get better. So there's a lot to like with Hall. You know what else, hey Dale? You know what else? There's a lot to like. Uh-oh. Midwest best bar. Oh, Midwest best barbecue and. 50 West Beer. Proud sponsors of the show. I thought we got a third sponsor for him. The, sh- yeah. the show whore is pulling up wrong stuff. No, no, no Scott Hoff is in another show. Sorry about that. But good place, though. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, Midwest Best and 50 West Beer, two proud sponsors of the show. No free advertisements, Greg. God damn it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, next guy, another second rounder. So, Chris Jenkins. Chop's favorite player at the chop. You're very. Yeah, he's not my favorite player, but I just I really like this guy in a second or third round. I mean, yeah. I'd, probably, I'd like him better in the third, but uh, of the draft, notable names. I mean, basically the draft prospects. He's he's fifth per PFF with uh, an eighty two point seven, and it's a run defense, right? So he's not very big, six two two ninety nine. He's not small, but he's strong as can be. 82.3 right. run defense, and then pass rush is where he lacks a little bit, 70.5. He's not awful. I think he's going to get better in the pass rush. It's just he doesn't he doesn't have a super explosive first step, and then his pass rush arsenal is just lacking. I mean, he needs to improve. That's where he needs to improve. Right now, he's probably an early down player, but he's got the athleticism to improve all of that. His RAS was almost 9 as well, 8.92. So he's got the athleticism. Yep. He was on Feldman's freak list coming into the season. Team captain, all that kind of stuff. Uh, really good with gap control. Uh, and like uh, I said, the pass rush upside is there. You just got to get it out of him. So, But at minimum, I think he contributes early because he's so good against the run. 
So even though he's not your true, you know, nose tackle type player, right? He's still going to help your team against the run. What What if you if, if you didn't put names on him and you just said, hey, uh, I, uh, you know, you got one defensive tackle guarantees you one sack per game, and the other one can is Damn. is a run stopper. I mean, just a bona fide fucking sack. run stopper. Which one of these tackles do you want? Give me the sack. I mean, yeah. Sacks are the splash plays, right? The yeah, game-changing okay. plays. The plays that cause a turnover. So, for me, that's – and I think that's why, like, my personal board is just how I feel. I think the guys that are making the splash plays, making the big plays, making the game-changing plays, the one that's – they get paid more. I mean, look at the guys that just got banked. You know, the Aaron Donalds of the world. So, I mean, it's not to yeah. say the run stoppers aren't important. Right. But if you have a premier pass rusher from the interior, it wrecks games. Chris Jones, Aaron Donald. So. You're right. I mean, those, yeah. you know, those guys that can get to the quarterback, that's the name you remember. The guys that are really strong about stopping the run, they're not as big. They're, they're not as big of names when people talk about them, you know. And they're on the field more often. Yeah. And yeah. and when the game's on the line, who's out there? If you're up by two points, the other team has the ball, you can't let them get in field goal range to win the game. You got your run stopper out there usually with two in a two minute drill? No. No, because you know the other team's passing. Exactly. That's right. So I, I just think it's more important. Yeah. A good for, for a defensive interior guy, you give me you give me a half a sack a game, and I'll take him all day over over the run stopper. I mean, yeah, especially because I mean the average. I think the average sack for an interior guy is like for a, a for a top level is like around eight or ten, right? I don't know. Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't have that right in front of me, but I mean, I believe you, Derek. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's those are not the guys leading the league typically, right? Yeah. You know, it's T.J. Watt, it's Trey Henderson, it's yes, those guys, Miles, Miles Garrett, or uh, yeah, Miles right. Garrett, uh, Daniil Hunter, Max Crosby, Max Crosby, yep, yep. Um, and you know what though? As long as we're talking about Chris Jenkins, we can talk about how Cincinnati used to be. It's almost like they're Ohio State homers dr- drafting Ohio State players all the time, but these last couple years, they fucking flipped the script, man. We've got nice Michigan. Grand. Uh, in the first two rounds, these last couple years, we only got just saying, you guys just the saying, first couple rounds. this guy's team captain. He's got a pretty good res. He stops the run. I mean, your draft guide looks like a Bengal player to me. Yeah, and chop T captain. That's one thing I always like exactly. saying. Exactly. I mean, I last just year we a secret like, Michigan fan. He's not even an LSU fan. He's a Michigan fan. <laughs> oh no, I'm LSU, but we ain't got nah, no D lineman that I want. No, no, I like I like one of LSU's D line. They got two. They got three D line in a later right? round. In a later round, but later round, but they, they do have one that I do like. Yeah. All right. So next up is old Rook. 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 Hamburgers. Hamburgers. I like the motor here, buddy. So consistent. Huh? Then consistent. Yeah. I, 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 there's a lot to like with Root. Uh, I mean, he hasn't put up huge sack numbers for last season, five this season, but it's just solid, right? And he's solid against the run. And I think he's only getting better. So, like, I, I don't even think he played football till like, sophomore or junior year of high school. And then he, right, was, yeah. he was so damn good that quick that he gets, you know, recruited by teams like Clemson, who's winning at that time national titles, you know, mm-hmm. competing every year. And goes there and gets on the field. So I mean, he's played. He's played a lot while at Clemson. He's at Clemson for five years, um, but he's been a starter for three straight seasons for Clemson on that D line. Him and Tyler Davis both played a lot of football. He's on this list as well. What's up, Will? Will's back. We missed him. Um, and then grade wise, Rook uh, he grades out better against the run. Seventy eight point six per PFF, sixty six point nine pass rush. I mean, the pass rush does. It needs to improve. He's got to have more moves. Uh, got to have better pass rush playing. But overall, I mean, I just I, – I really like Rook. I would have no hesitation with him in the second round even. So no, man. Wow. Big guy. Great Raz score. Wow, this is – Yeah, the Raz 9.92. So. 
Motor. Yeah. I like the word motor too. The motor is a big thing. Right. Awesome before too. Powerful bull rush. I like Same. motorboats. Mm. Who the fuck don't like a motorboat? <laughs> a motorboat. Those pierced nipples chop at the fuck draft. Yeah, event. I will let you <laughs> at the draft party. I'm probably end up piercing my tongue. Speaking of, and then you'll, and then you'll get caught up. Speaking of, yeah. If you want this fantastic draft guide that Dale has been uh, alluding to this whole show, a minimum donation of one dollar gets you a draft guide, and $5. we are getting, five dollars. Uh, there, is it inflation. $5? My bad. I decided yeah. not to be that cheap. Oh, yeah. It's inflation. Hey, I, for, I forgot about the bracket. Oh, my bad. So two sided. Right. So minimum day donation five dollar. We are dangerously close from hitting that thousand dollar donation mark, and we really appreciate everybody who's donated. And, and by dangerously really close, too. he means we're at like six hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, you it's not dangerously close. You just have to say dangerously close. We are over halfway there, basically at the goal. Sixty <laughs> percent. Whoa, we're halfway yeah. there. Oh, man. Bon Jovi, bon Jovi guy. All right, now everybody's favorite prospect, especially pork chops, because he loves the man meat. Oh, Andre God, Sweat. Yes. Sweating. Massive size. Yep. Wow. That's not obvious. We just went from a bunch of guys that are like 300 or a little bit under, and then we just fucking squashed them with 366 yeah. pounds. Ability oh, to score double teams, right? He's just, he's going to, if they get him, and you've got BJ Hill, and you've got Sheldon Rankins, and maybe you get another D tackle pass rusher, but it opens up all those guys, Murphy. Hubbard, Hendrickson, Osai, having that big ass body in there should help everybody. And obviously, all the attention he's going to get is going to open up the linebackers to play better. Because that, I mean, that was a big part of why we just weren't that damn good last year. Right. The linebackers both yeah. had down seasons, whatever reason. Right, yeah. And if they can just play better, I think it's going to help the team. And guy, having sweats going to help everybody just size wise, as long as he's motivated. Doesn't get that NFL contract and stop giving a shit. Right. Yeah. But I think he's definitely in play. Uh, yeah. That's a t shirt right there Godzilla. coming up. That's a t shirt, man, if he gets yeah. on his team. The, the only thing that I worry about, remember Tyler Shelvin? That's, is he, is this going to be another Tyler Shelvin right here? Tyler no, Shelvin wasn't that Greg. good. Wasn't that good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sweat's going to sweat. be awesome. The sweat has a higher ceiling. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Meet, and, the meat sweat. BFF. No, I, I'm not going to complain if we is sweat. Will sweat be there in the third round, or is he gone before they? Pay oh, he's gone round? in third round. I think he goes in the second. I mean, we're lucky if he's there at 49. If you ask me, I think 18 is way too big of a so, reach, but I don't think he makes it to 49 because, and I'm not, and it's not because of the talent as far as the D tackles. It's because he's the only true nose tackle in the draft. That is true. Well, that's going to push his stock up. I think that should probably go. In the first two days, there's there's some fourth yeah. round guys. There's some you know there's some day three guys. McKinley Jackson maybe slides into the back of the third. Maybe yeah. you consider McKinley Jackson a pick ninety seven if you miss on Sweat, but he's yeah. he's probably the next highest one. Evan Anderson, Fabian Lovett. Um, there's there's some guys. Christian Boyd. I think Christian Boyd's working his way up. I don't think he's far off. Honestly, Christian Boyd is not too far off from. Uh, McKinley Jackson. All right. Maybe that yeah. next guy. Yeah, Northern Iowa. You must have so moved him up. School, but. So if we went, say if we went either Newton, uh, say if we went either Newton or or uh, or Murphy in the first and we got Sweat in the second, would I, I'd be happy with that. I wouldn't complain, obviously. Yeah, and you just have to prioritize offensive tackle more. Ne- you, I still, you still got to do something, right? Right. Maybe, and maybe that's circling back to Beckton at least. As a swing tackle option, if you if you go with two D tackles in the first yeah. two rounds, yeah. because you can't just go with Trent Brown as much as he gets hurt yeah. without exactly. having quality depth. You can't say, "Well, Jackson Carmen's just finally going to Cody depth. Cody Ford Dale." Yeah. No, by by the way, uh, uh, Bengals Army here, which is Dusty, he said hey, he compared Sweat to Billings. Is that a fair comparison? Because Billings was very. I wanted him in like in the second round that year. We got him in the fourth. Billings. Did okay for us. He wasn't. I would. Would you thought? I don't really think he was a bust. Billings like six foot, three fifteen. He's a little meatball. Sweat right. is like six four, three fifty. Right. Yeah. It's just 
Yeah. 360, 365, whatever it is. We definitely won't complain about taking sweat in the second round. We would understand it. We definitely wouldn't complain. No. If we got, like, uh, Murphy or Newton and then sweat, come on, man. That's fucking five boners right there. Dude, hey, no, no, Chuck, you and I will grow uh, Longhorns or something. If it's Murphy and sweat, well, you and I will wear Longhorns or something. We'll go to Longhorn Steakhouse or something. Okay, fuck it. We'll go there even if they don't. Yeah. Do you worry at all that this is like, like you said, a 350, 360 pound man going up against like 19 and 20 year olds in college, and that's just why he's playing that much better? I mean, maybe. I know that he said he played better this past year, and he's a five year, he's been in college five years. I don't have his exact age, uh, he's probably a little bit older. I uh, definitely said he meant the height, but yeah. by the way. Yeah, Bill. I mean, I, I, I was high on Billings, man. I thought that was a hell of a steal in the fourth round. And, and you know what? He just got a contract in Chicago. I know he's bounced around the league, but he got a yeah. two-year deal in no, Chicago really? because yeah. he was playing well. So, I mean, I think he's kind of at least – and he's still in the league, and that a lot of guys can't say that. So, I think Billings has been okay, but obviously did not live up to the hype. <laughs> no one can say that. Everybody wanna the Longhorns with us. Everybody wants to go. To Everybody can come there and get a piece of meat. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm a Texas. Well, Texas Roadhouse works too. Then I didn't think about that. All no, right. Yeah, Greg's so excited. He wants to draft uh, all the Texas players for each Texas yeah. player. Is yeah, let's, let's do this. Hey, hey, Longhorns. Let's go, you? man. Let's get that Hook beef. Him. Hook him, Greg. Hook let's do it. No, I, I was a Texas Longhorns fan here and there. I do. I <laughs> did have a Longhorns T-shirt. They still email me to this day. So, hey, why not? Okay, um, his RAS his RAS score is like four point one five, but even Kentley Platt Math Bomb, who has built the relative athletic score formula, said like you know with his actual size because they're just not guys his size to really compare it to. But if you really factor in the size, the true RAS score would be more like an eight plus, yeah. which is the green, which means you're a good athlete. So, for yeah. his size, he's not a bad athlete. The relative athletics were, don't let it throw you off because the man who created the formula says for that size. And what he does, he's a space eater, you know? That's what yeah. he is. I wonder what his I wonder what his rad score would be up against, like, DJ Readers. It would be something interesting worth looking at. But, I mean, and, and most of the bigger guys don't have great rad right. score. It's just. Yeah. I'm not worried about, like, sweating out. Yeah, like Trent Brown. I mean, the man is a mountain. It's like six uh, eight. I, know. I think he was three fifty five at you know the combine, but now he's like three eighty. So We're like, Landry Brown. Worst rest. Uh, he had like. I mean, there you go. When when our team travels, our two offensive tackles can't get on the elevator at the same time because of weight limits. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> two twin towers, man. But yeah, the Brown I like sweat. And uh, like per PFF ninety two. Run defense grade, pass rush 85.3, top guy in college football per PFF this past year. So, I mean, there's a lot to like. I, you don't really see, like, pass rush moves. You just bang. It's me, go forward, get quarterback, you know. Yeah. That's all you need. Me, get quarterback. Me, go oh, yeah. forward. Sounds good to me. Uh, whatever works, right? Me, kick you yeah. ass. So, I, I mean, I would like it. I think for us it would be a, a great pick to fit talent with need there at pick 49. I I don't want to get him at 18. I know some people are like, well, I'd be fine taking him at 18. I wouldn't. I don't. No. Trade He's, back. If that's your pick at 18, take, trade back. You don't take guys that aren't going to be on the field, but 40% of the time you don't take them in the first round. And He's right. definitely not going to be a guy who is the rare exception that stays on the field more. Right. All right, so we talked about a lot of the top names. I don't want to sit here and go on and on with every single name on this list. If there's some guys you like that we haven't talked about, you guys are more than welcome to bring them up or discuss them. Who you got, Greg? Uh, the guy I got. Who was let's, that? Let's, I, I, let's I was... talk about Christian Boyd real quick because that was in the chat. Somebody earlier was asking about uh, Boyd. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I got my yeah. guy. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, did I say, is he Northern Iowa or North Texas? I, I don't know. I might fuck that up. I might have wrote that fucking school down wrong. So I thought he was Northern Iowa, and I have North Texas on here. Yeah. Oh, in the guide, you mean? 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to change that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he had a really good pro day recently. I, I, I watched him. He wasn't really on my radar too much until later in the process, and uh, so I added him a little late. Six four, three seventeen. So big ass dude as well. Violent hand, strong at the point of attack, good size, sturdy base. He plays with good leverage. Like a lot of times, if you're six four or so, that's not. It's usually inconsistent leverage. Is something you'll see in the con list for a lot of these guys. But he's kind of a rare exception. He, he stays low. He gets out in the low uh, stance off the ball, which really helps his ability to get after the quarterback and make or in the run game because he's got a quick pairs out with a quick first step. High effort. His bull rush. He's strong. I can't. I think he had like thirty eight. He set the record for his school on a uh, bench press reps at the pro day. I think it was like 38 reps, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's uh, not going to be the greatest pass rusher, but he gives you a little bit in that uh, aspect. The most sacks he had was this past year with two and a half. So he, he's your nose tackle type. Yeah, okay. And yeah. I think he's up there with McKinley Jackson. I think after Sweat, this is a guy that you – that doesn't get talked about enough, but I think he'll end up getting drafted closer to McKinley Jackson. Maybe this, the, he might be the second nose tackle off the board in this draft. All right. It doesn't sound like a bad pick. It just doesn't sound like somebody that's going to start. I mean, right. and it is right? Northern Iowa. Cause in my final thoughts, I wrote coming out of Northern Iowa, but for some reason I wrote North Texas. And, uh... Well, Dale, come on. You put so much time into this. You're probably tired at that point. Yeah. It's a big, well, it's a, you got a thick ass guy. I'm my own proofreader too, and I'm constantly editing it. It's not. It's a lot. Right. That's right. This is all in Dale's head. He doesn't need the sheet. I, Dale's head had to spill out on this paper. I had to print it out. I highly recommend getting a draft guide. It's cheap as shit, man. Yep. And you all get. Right, and right. not only that, yep. but this is the only draft guide I know of that you'll constantly get email updates. The draft guide gets updated. Yeah, start out 230 prospects at 242. I'd like to get to 250, but right. I just don't know if I'm going to. It's a lot. I've been, like, I added stats, like I said, just trying to add and make it look a little better overall. So, yeah, I like Dwayne Carter, Marcus Harris, Justin. Bo I know it's high on a Boyd B, but yeah. Marcus yeah. Harris graded out really well per PFF. Especially yeah. against the run, eighty-seven point four against the run. So he's not super big, but and you guys know I like Dwayne Carter. Talk about but, him a few times. But the one I, I'd like to talk about more. I mean, I know he's been inconsistent. I know he's been in college for like five years, so he's probably up there like twenty, probably around twenty-four. But Gabe Hall, man, I mean, th th this is one of my Yosti players. I have one of my top five Yosti players. I mean, six foot six, two ninety-one. Rass scored nine point two zero. Holy crap, man! Quality spin move, impressive senior bowl week, uh, three-year start experience. I mean, very versatile. I, I I know he's like average power, inconsistent, you know, limited pass. But I mean, this. I mean, you gotta find. I mean, this is someone where you, man. I I gotta find somewhere. You gotta find somewhere for him, right? If you if you take him, yeah. And, and that's the thing. How? I mean, I think he can play at D tackle some, but he's probably gonna have to put on a little more weight. Be at 6'6 right. and 290. You know, that's a little light for a deep tackle, obviously. Um, but he moves all around for Baylor. I, yeah, I, know, just so everybody I, knows, I mean, I think he's a day three, somewhere on day three. Just so everybody knows, if this is a guy like Yoshi, that means the Bengals are picking him. So go ahead and get used to this guy. Get used to knowing him. Start looking at him because we're definitely picking him. I don't know about that, but well, no, no, I got I, I got one running. There is a running back number one on my list, but when we we'll, we'll get to that when we get to running backs. But um, uh, Chop, you'll be proud of me for this one now. Mason Smith, another big guy, size, strength, initial burst, athleticism. He's only he, he's not he turns twenty two in October. Rat score eight point nine eight. I know he's got some injury histories and all that, but I mean, and he's been a little consistent. But man, that's another. I mean, I just I, I mean, you look at the size of the rat score, kind of like. Yeah. In, Gabe Who Hall, was that? Uh, uh, Mason Smith. Yeah. LSU. Oh, yeah, from LSU. Yeah. 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 His freshman year, he's really good, and then he tore his ACL in like the first game mm -hmm. uh, in '22, so he missed like that whole season. So, I mean, you know, that's the thing. He didn't have a phenomenal season this past year, 
But we all know with D tackles and the bigger guys, sometimes it takes that year to really get up to speed. So he's a guy that, even though I have him, I think at around the fourth round range, it won't surprise me if he goes a round or more earlier. This guy, I mean, the athleticism's there. Like you said, he's young. I mean, he's he's just a big dude, first yeah. off the bus type of guy, and hell of an athlete at that size. Yeah. So I think his best, I think his best football is ahead of him too. Yeah. As long, as long as we're talking about LSU, what what do you think about Wingo? That was another yeah. I, he should just be better. So we're talking smaller, right? Six four two eighty four. Yeah. So Six he's definitely two eighty four. Yep. Uh, he's just now getting ready to turn twenty one in April, so that's a plus. The smaller gives him the natural leverage. He's got active hands, quick first step. You know things you want to see. Uh, had four and a half sacks this past season, three before. I I just want to see more. And tackles went down to twenty five from 46 the year before, but he missed some time this season. He missed six games with a lower body body injury. When yeah. they're in college, we don't always hear exactly what those are. So just lower body, body injury. Um, PFF-wise, he is 77.6. His run defense was 75, which honestly better than I thought it probably was, watching yeah. him on tape. And then pass rest, 73.3. So not bad. He's young. I think... Somebody will take him probably earlier than they should. Right, probably so. There's a lot to work with, and somebody's going to think they can get the best out of them. What round are you comfortable with the Bengals pick him up that you're not that you, that you feel good about it? I mean, if they took him in the fourth, yeah, and they've had good good history. So, I mean, if they took, I mean, let's just if they go sweat in the second and come back and take another D tackle, that's more of a pass rusher in the fourth. I wouldn't mind that at all and that's you know that's where like wingo and guys like that dwayne carter you know those type of guys is right. your second guy and you really just yeah. try to load up in the defensive tackle spot yeah i want to go back to dwayne carter um his senior year bit of a down year compared to his junior year but no he, you know, i can see why you're a big fan high football iq bull rush team captain i mean that that's all right there very sold for me right there what's up miguel but no, that, I'm, I'm all sold on that. I, I definitely see why you're a big fan of him because I've heard you multiple times bring him up. I, could, I just wonder why his senior year was a bit of a downfall compared to his junior year. Yeah, and I, I don't know the answer to that. Right. And, I mean, he's listed with just five and a half sacks and 22, but some places had him at eight. So that's what I put in the guide. But um, on here it's got him at five and a half. And even 2021 he had four and a half. This past season, it had him just down for one, which I had saw two previously. Um, he still he had forty one tackles up from thirty six the previous two years, but he's just you're going to get to say you're going to get effort, you're going to get a leader, right? Um, three year captain. I mean, if, if Me something too. doesn't scream Zach Taylor type of oh guy, a three year team captain certainly is. Definitely is, would not be surprised. What, what round? Third round? Do you think? Or I think a pick ninety seven would be. You know, maybe the highest with that comp pick, but I mean, in an ideal world, fourth round. Him and Wingo, fourth round would be a great spot for him. Yeah, definitely you wouldn't know, about him. No, just depending how the rest of your draft went, maybe pick ninety seven. But you might be looking at a McKinley Jackson at pick ninety seven, or Christian Boyd at pick ninety seven too. Just real quick, on sweat. thanks to Miguel for the super chat. We really yeah, appreciate, appreciate it, Miguel. Thanks, thanks a lot, buddy. And then, uh, what about Will? Here is talking about Chroma. I haven't watched him. Six four two seventy five, Rugers. That might be your next one, Dale. Yeah, yeah. I have to watch. I'm him. on your way. I, up I've seen two. the name. Like I've seen the name. I think I have him in the best of the rest. But there's some of those guys in the best of the rest. Just I've seen them on the list, and I haven't got around to watching them. I said nine sacks, eighteen point five total. Uh, tackles for loss. Hey, that doesn't sound bad. Yeah. But you know, I gotta imagine that competition's a little lower too, right? Yeah, they don't play as many high level, but that's Jalen Green. I've got his uh, seventh round guy, who also went to James Madison. He was the leading sack getter in college football until he got injured. Derek, when you get the money, two dollars of it's Greg's right I off. Appreciate the bat. it, Miguel. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You gotta you gotta I'm do uh, do the dishes, Greg. Right. Yes, sir. That's the new dance that he's doing on Friday. It's called "Do the Dishes." There you go. Yeah. Nice. Which uh, I think I'm we're going to 
I think we're going to go back to Monday and Friday starting yeah. next week. We are going to do Friday this week, and then, you know, we get a week out from the draft or so. We yeah. might right. uh, do three shows again. And when there's stuff going on, it's kind of – we're in that kind of period between free agency and the draft, and uh, we'll try to do a maybe a mock draft on Friday. I didn't see that. I wanted to kind of do one with that Pro Football Network. Yeah, but I didn't see it up yet when I left work. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. Jay said that was going to come he out. Yeah, he did tweet. Yeah, he lied to us. It wasn't out yet. God damn it, Jay. Dale, I was going to say one thing we haven't done yet: our thirty-two team mock draft. Yeah, yeah. I tried to do that at some point too. So someone earlier was asking if we're going to be doing the live draft show, and that is the plan, except for day two because day two we're going to be at the Project Game Day. Midwest best barbecue, um, raising money for uh, to send military veterans and disabled adults to the Bengals games. So the second day of the draft will be eating the fucking shit out of some good ass barbecue and having fun with everybody. Since he hat's going to be there, they got an exclusive hat that they're going to um, be selling there, and um, and then uh, and then the third day is hot as fuck. And then the third day we'll we'll do it again. But yeah, so first day Iceman's supposed to come on. Might do a pre-draft show on his channel. Supposed to come on here. Uh, Chop's going to be on. I think Hude Joe's going to come on. I've invited uh, two or three other people. We'll see if they're on or not. Yeah. Um. Second day will be at Midwest. We may maybe we'll try to record some of our thoughts when the Bengals pick and just post them on Twitter or somewhere. And then we'll probably do day three. I haven't decided for sure. It depends how long that night goes because it starts – Saturday starts at, like, noon. But, yeah. I mean, we'll be on at some point, but we'll probably be at noon, but we'll just see. Just see. Okay. Hey, if we do get Sweat and Murphy or I will be ordering – I will be on day three. If we do do a show, I will be eating Texas Roadhouse Live. On. <laughs> yeah. We will be recording Greg if we get players he likes on day two running – Butt ass naked outside of Midwest. Yeah, but no, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Wearing nothing but barbecue sauce. The there you content go. you all really want, Greg. He'll be the new G Funk, the Greg Funk. Yep. Instead of instead of tassels, he'll be wearing chicken wings. Yep. Right. It's true. Full it's chicken wings party. covering his his parts. That's right. You got a rack cover of ribs. Got to cover it up with a flat. Might need a slab of ribs. <laughs> yeah. You probably Greg. do. You probably need like a king slab. Yeah. To cover up Greg shit. Yeah. Look at him. Look how he's sitting while we're talking oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. He's like, it's huge. You guys. I bet he can idea. bring up the comments with his hands just like that. Yeah, he probably is right now. <laughs> Try it right now, Greg. Oh, see? I told you. Jeez, Greg. What are you hitting that with, Greg? We know what he's hitting it with. That man stick. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah is. so so Friday. <laughs> Friday we may uh we may get into offensive tackles, or we may do that once a week. We'll just see. Try to hit some different positions, just uh, give our thoughts on some of these players, some of the PFF grades on them. Maybe Friday um, we'll do punters. I yeah, definitely want to do a mock draft Friday, so we'll just see. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the time goes. All right, boys. Go ahead and this one. Get back to cutting some grass. Just cutting a little grass before it starts. Oh, the Here grass cut is back, huh? Yeah. Here we go. Boy, boy, I, started, you know, I started cutting grass at work today. There you go. It was just time. This fucking neighbor's fault. He fucking hired somebody to cut his grass. And they they fucked you over, man. They the did it two days ago, and I was like, That's what I'm saying. The neighbors cut your grass. Man, it's aggressive. I, I mowed my yard about two weeks ago, and I may or may not have mar- buried my lawnmower. So I got to do some, some fixing the yard now. Derek, why did you do it when it was muddy? I don't know. This yes, guy. No. You need a cut. Yeah, it's true. Because the neighbor cut his. So Derek had to go cut his. He's got damn neighbors with their passive aggressive asses yeah. cutting their own grass. Makes it look no, bad on us. Was, what it was was I uh I texted dad. I said, I'm getting ready to mow, you're run you're run late. He said, dude, I've already mowed twice this year. I'm like, son of a bitch. What do you want an invite for? I, He's talking about grass? grass party, I think. Uh, I was going to say, uh, Dustin can come cut my grass. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Swing by my house. It's on the way to Dale's, Dustin. Actually, your your house is on I'm the way. I'm going to take a nap. You should cut the grass. There you go. Yeah. 
Hurry up. It's two hours from wherever you're at, Dusty. Shit, Dusty's like three hours away, I think. All right, boys. We'll be back on Friday. Greg will dance for us. Uh, hey, I already danced uh, Monday, but whatever. Who's yeah, counting? you got to stop screaming, preview. though, man. The screaming is aggressive. Yes. Hey, you asked for it, man. You got to get, like, the slow jam and break it down. And hey, you asked for it, Dale, and I deliver. So Need R. Kelly, uh, you start peeing. Very white. No, we ain't be doing none of that. Okay. All right. Wow, wow, wow.